on the cliff side. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I stole y'all. Ricky's thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no one can steal my thunder. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Welcome to Dragon Ball Z. Oh, no, what? I mean the CTDW. <laughs> DBZ, CTDW. There's so many <laughs> acronyms. I don't even know what's happening. Oh, alphabet soup of a good variety. <laughs> yes, of a good variety. We have to clarify nowadays because it gets... Uh, a little tricky. Um, welcome, guys, to the CTDW. Uh, this episode is a long-anticipated, long-studied, I will say, episode. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, I hope as much as we do, you guys are in for a treat. This is a really cool topic that I think that a lot of people personally don't really... It's not even really on their radar. Um it is to a few of us weirdos, but I'm hoping that us few weirdos will make a dent in your thought process because what we're talking about, frankly, changes the landscape of everything you believe, whether you're a Christian or not, um, mm-hmm. and it's super important to meditate on. Uh, I guess, uh, Shell, is there anything you wanted to say before I kind of just give the plugins and lay the groundwork? No. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have teased you about this episode (laughs) oh man for a long time been about a month um we every time we have uh wanted to start this episode we have just felt that there was still too much unearthing to do Mm -hmm. um and honestly to rank tonight it will just be really a rudimentary touching of the subject um you know what if uh archaeologists have been studying this for thousands of years and digging earnestly into the really the dirt of this matter (laughs) then um it stands to reason that it's a little bit time consuming for us as well but we're very excited to get you interested in some archaeology indeed some very very fascinating and very cool archaeology this is part of our two uh episode series um we don't know how long in theory we could go on with this one but we're just going to make it two short episodes to kind of get to some other topics uh we have titled this one megaliths ziggurats or rather megaliths the tower of babel and dbz ziggurat is essentially the same thing so um synonyms but just to give you guys a little bit of context uh dragon ball z megaliths and ziggurats those fun things um this particular episode is about megaliths so uh that is a very cool in fact megaliths is what this one's about um (laughs) let me give you guys quick plugins and uh we'll get started so um First and foremost, you guys can follow us on social media. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. Um, actually, we're really trying to get this, the conversation started on Twitter. Uh, I know that that's the catchphrase, but that's the truth. Um, Instagram, we're on TikTok, where you can find all of our shorts and really support us there. I'm trying to put more stuff, more content on there all the time. Uh, if you guys would go out and support us, those that would be super great, uh, super grateful for us. It helps when you guys subscribe um, for us to be able to start, you know, actually getting some revenue. So that in theory, we can kind of transition away from day jobs. Our day jobs, right. have fun 
fun jobs where we actually get to entertain you guys and give you cool info and really um, mm -hmm. ultimately use this as a ministry because that's what it is. It is a ministry. Um, all the stuff that we're talking about is considered fringe, but it shouldn't be because it's it's biblical. I mean, all this stuff is biblical. Right. Um. So we're on that. You guys can also hit us up if you would like to on YouTube and Rumble. Um, I'm slowly uploading all of our episodes as they come out. Um, be patient. You know, I'm literally doing everything. I participate. I study. I, I research, participate, edit, and promote. So it's it's a lot. I just research, guys. Sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. She does good research because I can't do all of it. Um, I certainly can't do all of it. <laughs> and uh, really, that's it, guys. If you want to check out any of our stuff or all of our stuff, even our own personal um, social media web pages, that's at this. That's at solo.to slash the CTDW. It will be posted below. Um, you can also follow us on Spotify or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Now, having gotten that out of the way, I'm going to go over just real quick kind of what we're going to talk about. We're going to be talking about what megaliths are, what sites we're going to be talking about today, because there's a bajillion we could talk about right why man. are that's yeah why are that's why when shell says we're doing a rudimentary uh kind of overview it, it, we're being serious um right. why are these megaliths relevant why could they not have been created by men and <laughs> what happened to these sites and how is it possible that there are still remains all this and more on megaliths the tower of babel and dragon ball z <laughs> um cool i'm gonna let shell actually take the reins here shell do you want to get started and let us know what are megaliths man it's it's a mega subject um megaliths are huge huge structures that really we cannot figure out how to duplicate them. We can make smaller versions, but um, when I say megalith, I assume that almost everybody thought right away of the pyramids of Giza, which mm -hmm. they are megaliths good, and they are pretty stinking cool. Yep. Um, if you did not think that, I am willing to bet you thought of uh, Peru and Cusco. Mm -hmm. um, and if you didn't think of that, then I assume you <laughs> thought of Easter Island and those huge, huge, um, I don't even know. What do we call those dudes? Uh, megaliths. We do call them megaliths. <laughs> <laughs> True story. There is not a continent on this planet that doesn't have megaliths. North America, South America, mm -hmm. Antarctica, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll deal with Antarctica a little bit more um, than you would expect, I think. Yeah. Uh, there are some in Africa, which you know what? Unfortunately, I don't know. Mm. Oh, Egypt. Actually, yeah. Egypt. <laughs> count oh, <well>, that. <laughs> barely um yeah, as yeah. africa no uh, the middle east europe um i assume even in russia although i can't think of any off the top of my head for russia um definitely china by the mm, way as, as much as i want it to be the great wall of china is not considered a megalith mm -mm. Mm -mm. And when you know what, when you look at the stones, um, I would say that's why, because I, I was looking at the stones and they were very manageable for humans. What what uh, what are they made of? Do you know that shell? The ones in the Great Wall of China? I actually don't know. Oh, you know what? I don't know either. I um, I did a, a really quick study on it and um when i saw how how small the stones were you know just a few hundred pounds uh not tons i was just kind of like even that's Meh. crazy right a few hundred well and it took them a long time to do yeah. uh 
it, and it's it's a huge structure, but megalithic doesn't necessarily mean huge. Um, the stones used in megalithic structures mm. are phenomenally huge. And therein lies the difference, I think. Did you find out what they were made from, Rick? Yeah. Construction made of the Great Wall were mainly earth, stone, brick, lime, and wood. Um, although they did use a little bit of granite and a little bit of marble. But I'm, I'm assuming that's probably on the lower end. because Cladding. Yeah, the pretty stuff. Yeah. That, that would be... Um what i would assume as well mm -hmm. so um i mean for a while that big you probably just grab whatever you can find to be honest probably and um the difference between the great wall of china and those stones and a megalith is that megalithic structures have stones that weigh dozens of tons to hundreds In of ordinate tons. amounts of weight it's super crazy. I think there's some one stone I think I saw was 200,000 tons. There's, there's Two, one shell. 200,000 tons in New Grange yeah. in Ireland. Wow. It's, it's the 200, flat 200,000 tons. 200,000 tons. That's what the site says. Um, it's a cairn uh, encompassing a, a tomb. And uh, that Good particular God. megalith is about like 5,000 years old. Right. It's crazy. And freaking the capstone is 19 feet off the ground and it's still waterproof five millennia later. Sheesh. That's what makes um, a megalithic structure. Yeah. They withstand. Everything, Everything, but I don't know. I mean, probably not a the Earth um, being nuked, right? A, 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 or um, what are those things that come from outer space? A huge Asteroids. meteor, meteorite. Yeah, mm -hmm. a huge. Well, meteorites are smaller, so a meteor, I imagine, it would not withstand a direct. More like a hit. medium, medium, right? Yeah, <laughs> a medium, right? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, I was going to say when you were asking what would we call those guys on Easter Island, we can't call them, we can call them megaliths, but we could also call them giga chads. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so bad. Uh, giga chad. Uh, sorry, I'm not sorry. Oh, um, man, alive. So. <laughs> we we will touch <laughs> on a few of the megaliths. Um, I have a couple dozen written down here, and there are a few that we will uh, sit and um, delve into a little bit more. Scavenge through, right? Gobekli Tepe is one mm -hmm. that we will will sit at a little bit, um, and that is in Turkey. Turkey Turkey, yay, I believe, yep. is how they now want to be referred to. Um, hmm. The Temple of Malta, which, um, hey, is located on Malta, but they've got a complex, uh, a temple complex, and it's called Gantija. It's spelled G-G-A-N-T-I-J-A. Hmm. But what word? does that sound like to you uh yeah i mean i'll let you say it but yes giant like yep when i looked at it i was like oh man huh <sighs> but it's it, it just it caught me um that temple it, they believe was built between 3500 and 2500 bce i have no problem with bc ad but I also have no problem with BCE. Go ahead, call it the Common Era. What separated BCE okay, no, that's from a long freeze. Common Era? It's still that seed that matters. It's still Jesus. Jesus still separates time. 
uh, te the Temple of Malta between 3500 and 2500 BCE. And there is no respect to Jesus if we use that term because he's still <laughs> what separated time. Call it yeah. whatever you want, guys. He's still the separation point. Shots fired! Shots fired! So that always, that, that always like tickles me. Um, I am. Um... I almost forgot to mention one that I was researching today and we, we both know, and I can't believe neither of us thought about it while we were preparing is the serpent mound in Ohio. Oh my gosh. No kidding. I didn't write yeah. down any of the American megaliths, but yeah, I um, wanted to make sure we included at least one because it's important for people to have something to relate to. Like there are megaliths here, right? There absolutely are. Um, and and I think in America that's not all too. There's the Anasazi runes, um, hmm. and and of course you know I think I was thinking U.S. Um, more than than the continent, but in Mexico. Oh, certainly. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> there, there's plenty of there. Them. There's a lot. There, there's definitely. <laughs> um, there's two sets of pyramids, at least. Right. In in the northern, uh, the northwestern hemisphere. Yeah. So yeah, let's correct. see. What else is there? Oh, there's Machu Picchu. Mm hmm There is, oh, Ricky, you know I'm going to say it wrong. Saxe. Saxe woman. Saxe woman. Sorry, it's mm. that H that gets me all the I think time. And I, I think know it should be a Oh, no, you're good. Um, I think think they would say sexawaman i think but i don't i don't know if that's the right pronunciation i think it is though um you know in good old cusco 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 yeah. cusco is is cusco. a very a very i am i'm mixing up a place in peru with a very good uh pasta type grain <laughs> have you had couscous? close second i really like close it close second <laughs> <laughs> that's funny man um Saksa wama is one that is really freaking cool they have the curved walls yeah they have the the weird just curvatures. bizarre super um, bizarre it, it I, we can't do it today. No, um, no, we can't. It's indescribable, to be honest. Like you have to see it for yourself. You know what? Another really interesting thing about it is that they quarried the stones, and they're huge. They're they're twenty, forty tons. They're taller than a human. You know the the pictures they show. They'll have like this capstone, and it's like three, four stories high. Yeah, it's yeah, gigantic. It's just ridiculous. Um, and and people feel free to Google it. And it is not hard to find these these pictures at all. Uh, people go to Peru. Multi, uh, there are multiple tours every year in Peru mm -hmm. of Cusco. And uh, Cusco, gosh darn it, I just can't with <laughs> saying it right. It's Cusco, a Cusco, Cusco, it's a Cusco. Cusco. And I, you know what? Not the Cusco, oh, it's a Cusco. It, embarrassing fact i really love cusco from i don't know if disney know fame is. he's the emperor who turns into the llama because he's a oh, jerk i thought you were talking about the pasta i was like i don't remember having it oh no because okay so i'll have to send you a good recipe for cusco all right cusco, fair enough. but we won't cook Cusco. It's Cusco that is the food and it is Cusco who that is the place and that Disney right. made the very cute Correct. series. I really yes. enjoyed it. Before we stopped liking them. Um, be, before the Hollywood agenda became one to steal our children away. Dude, I'm going to go on a small tangent here. Um, Do Francis Chan talked years ago probably 20 2010 like quite a long time maybe 2008 mm -hmm. um he was talking about his daughters when they were little one of them had a nightmare and she cried out and he went in to her and her nightmare 
was had something to do with Minnie Mouse. Whoa. And he talked about how Disney is stealing our children's um, imagination, even to the oh, point yeah. that their nightmares are not, they're branded, you know? <laughs> and I'll, I'll just, I'll never forget that. I thought, that's disgusting to me. And that's when Disney was still pretty tame. Tame. Tame's a great way to say it. But yeah. I, I will never forget that. And I think he was talking about it at a, a passion conference that mm. happened to be recorded. And, and I I saw it and I was just like, mind blown, yeah. you know, um, that Disney and probably all of Hollywood is trying to steal or hijack our imaginations. So just little oh that's a whole there that's a whole uh, talk right there hey what's up guys like what you hear want to hear more well then don't waste any more time head over to patreon at patreon.com slash the ctdw to hear this full episode it's only five bucks a month to become an exclusive member with special access to all our full episodes please like subscribe and rate us five stars wherever you listen to podcasts see you at the christian dark web Right. So that's that's um sex a woman and sex a woman. and um, much there's, there's, there's one I wanted to mention. I think it's uh Guang Guangshong uh in oh, China that I yes. looked up recently. Um that one is just it I have to find some pictures of it and I'll I'll, I'll see if I can like post a link on, on it, but or, or look it up here in a second while we're kind of talking. But it's just ridiculous. I mean it's it's just unreal like it's 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 literally like the size of a mountain it literally is the size of a mountain not like it is the size of a mountain and all of a sudden there's just a giant right angle that goes straight down <laughs> it's just crazy i mean i looked at it i was like there's there is no way like <laughs> right angles don't there's no way we could do in, that right now in nature they don't if you but, see a right angle you know that it's it's manufactured what would it be it uh concave is when it's opening though right this would this was like a convex angle like mm. it wasn't even an open angle it was like it was a closed a angle closed it's, angle it's crazy wow. like i could understand erosion happening right like at an open angle but when a you have scoop, a closed angle effect. yeah or even like even like the pyramids right like the pyramids go like away from the sides because i've right. seen stuff like that where wind whips around uh right I, right i was in a hurricane in taiwan and there was rain i could clearly see it was whipping around the the uh, the building crazy but not a, not in a uh, stuff like that doesn't happen in in a small enclosed area that looks like you know that looks like this i mean that's not a thing, right you know? um, right anyway uh sorry i, I didn't mean to interrupt Is, are we missing any oh, other oh. sites Oh, we have a lot. <laughs> we have a ton a of sites. <laughs> um, let's see. We've covered Africa, uh, Latin America, the U.S. Um, we? So the Standing Stones. Uh, we did get some some stuff in Europe. Um, there's the the I mean, new there's the range obvious, in um, Ireland. Um, 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 the uh, Stonehenge, obviously, right? Stonehenge in um, oh, you is know it, what? Where, is it Ireland it is as well, in, or is it UK? It it's in the UK. It's in Wil oh, okay. Wilshire, uh, England, on the Salisbury Plains is where Stonehenge is. Then there's another set of standing stones in um, Karnak in France. Hmm. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. and they're all That's over. Right. They're they're all over there. Yeah. Um, and the stories are really, really interesting. There's one that I really am interested in. It's not standing stones. It's paving stones under the mm. sea. And that's oh, the yeah. Bimini Road, man. And I also like to say the word Bimini. Bimini, Bimini, <laughs> Bimini. It's just a fun word. Follow the Bimini um, Road. Follow the Bimini Road. <laughs> There's um, Easter Island, which we talked about a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's also um, a New Zealand 
one. I was about to say New Zealand is one we've been looking at. Uh, 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 where did that go? Do, 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 do. Oh, I know why the New Zealand one is um, on my radar. That's Maori in New Zealand. Oh, right. Of course. So I will, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a second. There's Ballback, which has a huge. Mm, of course. 1,000 ton plinth. Um, uh, I the, think it's, the, there's another one that's almost 2,000 tons. And that's not the pregnant woman. The, that's the pregnant the one, one is the one that you're thinking the of pregnant is the 1,000 tons. Right, yeah. yeah. The pregnant woman is the 1,000 ton right. plinth. Uh, Baalbek is in Le- Lebanon, right? It's on Lebanon. I think it's about 10 miles from the border of Syria. I had to look okay. up on the map, map exactly where it was. It's about... Mm, 40 miles northeast of uh, Beirut, to give you an idea. It's really crazy. And Rick, I think you have a picture of that one, I right? Do. I do. Indeed. Here, watch. I, I mean, I know you do because you have sent it to me. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and I've you seen pull it up? It. Yeah, do it. All right, let's see. We can look at some, you'll some see, of these photos You'll right see now. the people buy them uh, and yeah, that's give the you an part. idea Here we of... Go. There we go. So, how large these structures are they're look they're at this guy just right here. insane and yeah, you know what really a are. thousand a thousand slaves could not with ropes and pulleys and <laughs> wet sand or whatever move these things look at that that is one piece of stone that was quarried and these there's quarries, the quarry itself uh, yeah no no not in the same place they're like it's like what like two miles away i think they said or is it, it had it listed here um so in yeah. peru uh, cusco the the um andesite blocks are um quarried in ecuador it's a thousand miles away <laughs> oh man it, it's nuts i mean like you just real, love to say it's it. a thousand miles away What's a thousand miles from me, Rick? You're not quite a thousand miles from me. No, I'm not even five hundred <laughs> miles. And we're on opposite away. ends of Texas. Texas. If you cross all of Texas, I think it's maybe six hundred miles. Oh, I was thinking it was eight. No, it's not that far. It's not even no. that far. Mm-mm. Let's um, see. I'll pull it up real quick. Cool. You'd think that we'd know these things, but I th- I thought there was a, a um sign here in El Paso that gives the um, distance to, is it Beaumont? Beaumont, which I was just there. Um, It's a long drive, that's for sure. Yeah. So from from, from here to, oh, from here to El Paso is a little bit farther than I thought. It's 600 miles. Um, And then, let's see, from there to Beaumont. Beaumont is 834 miles it's not even a thousand miles that's but all it of is texas. over 800 which is what i thought so i get the star <sighs> that's crazy all right start for you <laughs> so right. here here's the star um, there you thank you <laughs> <laughs> nice my star's on my ankle i'm not lifting my leg for you to see my star of david <laughs> um so what's a thousand miles from An ungodly El Paso. distance. Uh, maybe into Louisiana? Definitely. A, I can't imagine. Okay, so think about just in modern day, right? What would it take to take the pregnant woman from a quarry, say, because Job is who does our quarrying here? We have quarries in El Paso all over. Here you um, go. I, got, I actually have a good estimate for you. So let's see. This is. um, So from here, from Austin, from Austin, Texas to like, where is the city here? Um, Basically where Gainesville is in Florida is a thousand miles. That's a thousand miles. So again. Let's do this mental exercise. We're going to get 
that plinth. Oh my gosh. Good Bring God. that picture back up, Rick. Um, the one I just don't, had up? I don't even, I don't even think we have a vehicle that can convey that. I don't think a semi truck with an extended flat bed. There's no way. Look at that. It's a stupid That's like, distance. It's a stupid it, size. What would you, there is not a vehicle that we have, a land vehicle that we have in existence on planet Earth that could move that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's okay, 19.6 meters by 6 meters by 5.5 meters. I assume that's height. So 64 foot. The average trailer of a, actually the big trailer of a um, semi is 53 foot. I know because I work in logistics and my husband's a trucker. Mm. So, so that is an additional 11 feet. So it would hang over 11 feet. The, the, 20 foot wide i guess 20 if we feet put it is on its, like guess if we put it on its side and it's just 18 feet that is still hanging way over for a semi truck yeah so i mean I'm 18 just... feet is like three really like pretty tall guys on one on top of the other that's 18 feet yeah and that's i like think three the... of me one on top of the other <laughs> The average 40 high cube container, that's still bigger than a 40 high cube container. Yeah. Here, look, I'm going to show you the other piece. Let's see a good picture where there's... Look, and look what's guys. more is a 40 high cube, a, a, a big rig can only have 80,000 pounds on there's, it. That's a good photo right there. Good night. That's crazy. 80,000. So there is no way we close. could move that by modern standards. That could not if be you, moved a if you cut feet. that off right there, you might be able to transport just what you see in the picture on a semi. Maybe. So Maybe how, that much. How, yeah. How many would that be? So probably have to cut that into four or five. Probably. Um, stones. Now, I, in all fairness, the rocks at um, Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman are probably maybe cutting that in into five stones certainly but still you know what they didn't have back five thousand years ago <laughs> semis they didn't have semis yeah or uh they also Huey's. probably didn't have precision granite cutting tools <laughs> that we know of that that we know of we know that yeah. There is precision Obviously they had cutting something. done, um, yeah. but we find no tools of it. And like the tools that they have in Giza to to show what they used, it's like, yeah, saying, go ahead, get me crayons, man, because it is not believable what you're trying well, to sell. If you use your the, brain. The, the um, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'll, I'll get to that point in a second, but just, you know, relevant to like. It's just not practical for humans to do that. I'm, sh I'm sure some of those things they could do, certainly some of them, not all of them, not all of them. There's just not, there's not a way. Um, so, it, oh, go ahead. So Sean, this is the, this is the thing about a megalithic structure is that we can't reproduce them. The closest we could come maybe to making the stones this big, honestly, would be if we poured concrete, if we did molds. Mm -hmm. That we could do. We <laughs> could make that. What we could not do is quarry granite and move it. Now, I saw a supposition, and I thought it was really fascinating that they ground up this the rock, the and andesite, which, by the way, andesite is extremely high on the... um. The Mohs scale? The Mohs scale. It's a very hard, hard stone. It is not the hardest yeah. stone, but it's like a 7 out of 10, something like that. Yeah. Um. So it wouldn't be easy to do. Granite, also a hard stone. But so in theory, you grind it down, right? I mean, that's what we do with concrete. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. You make a mold, you pour it in, and then you've got your big stone. Yeah. Except that there wasn't supposed to be that technology 5,000 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and then if we get someplace like Go Gobekli Tepe, um, that is 12,000 years old. Yeah. Or what's the new one? Oh, what's the new one, Rick? That replaced um, Gobekli. It is Bonchulu Tarla in southwest mm, Turkey. Mm-hmm. Both both sites are in Turkey. Both sites are um, dated at about twelve thousand years. Um, <sighs> Crazy. There wasn't that kind of technology Whoa. for humans. There was not that type of human technology. If you're a Christian and you believe in um, the young earth creationist theory, which is where I'm comfortable, I'm not going to lie. Um, 12,000 years ago, there weren't humans on this planet. Uh, The genealogies of the timelines in the Old Testament really put mankind at about 6,000 years. Wrong one. Now, you know, this isn't this isn't a a hill I'll die on. I am a creationist and that is a hill I'll die on. God made it. But in between in the beginning and when God created the heavens and the earth for man. Oh, my gosh, that is so so beautiful um there there could have been an angelic race on the planet it seems likely that there was we know ezekiel which we we covered in a previous episode not too long ago actually um we know that ezekiel and isaiah both tell us that um that that chief light bringer Angel was cast down from heaven mm-hmm. because he said, I will ascend. Um, I will be worshipped like the most high um, for his hubris. He yep. he was cast down to the earth. We um, we don't know when that was. We do know that he wasn't subject to time, that there was not time before God created the earth and man. That's when he made time. So. Um, it, it's kind of irrelevant when he was cast down. We know that he was cast down. I know that the Elohim are spirit beings. Mm-hmm. We 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 know this. this. It's a foregone conclusion. But we also know that they have some sort of physicality when they are here. We mm-hmm. know that um, more than one of the patriarchs made them food and ate with them. We know that Abraham did on more than one occasion, if I remember right. We know that Gideon, good old Gideon, you know, told the the angel of the Lord, the the Mm -hmm. one who who would be Christophany, would have been Jesus. Um, Hey, hang out here while I go prepare you some food. And he brings back the angel smites it. You know, you can go to judges and read the story for yourself. Um, friend of mine just did a deep dive into Gideon and it was, it was really great actually. Mm. Um, it, it's really interesting because, you know, Gideon worshiped Baal. Well, his father, his father worshiped Baal and Ashtoreth. And um, God still came to this, this, pagan jew gideon and said hail and what's up mighty dude you know and gideon said who are you talking to i am not a mighty (laughs) dude i am the least of the least yo and and you know after this angelic talk god tells him hey you know your your dad's bull, the the second bull, the one that's seven years old. I want you to take that bull, and I want you to go up to the high place where your dad's altar of Baal has been built, over where the altar to Yahweh stood as well. He said, "I want you to break down Baal's altar. I want you to take the Ashtaroth pole that's next to it, cut it up, put it on my." Um, 
altar, which you fix up. You know, you can use some of those stones from Bale's altar, put them on mine. Take that that wood from the Asherah pole, put it down because you're going to do a holocaust. You're going to do a burnt offering and take your dad's bull, a bull of Bashan. It's a, a mm. male bull, a bull that was made to be worshipped or made to be sacrificed in worship to Baal. Put that all on and uh, reconsecrate my my altar to me. And mm. then I'm going to tell you what you're going to do after that, dude. So just just a really interesting. You forget about Gideon. You know, mm. you know, he's he's threshing wheat in the the wine press floor and everybody gets the impression that he's he's very afraid but the midianites who had been attacking them were destroying all their food stuffs so i don't think he was hiding so much as trying to keep the provisions from being destroyed by the enemy um i don't even know why i just told the story of midian other than i, I just either. thought it was totally cool and we're talking about <laughs> stones I don't even remember where I was at before I started talking about Gideon, um, but maybe somebody needs to know I about we're Gideon about, today. Uh, to go back to Tepe and just kind of older civilizations. It's the last thing we, I remember. We were definitely in um, in that area. Do, do you have a few more sites you want to look at, or do you um, want to jump onto the? I want to do. Oh, well, actually, so I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about Giza, but you happen to have all of your notes, and um, then I don't have to be the one talking all the time. <laughs> so let's go to the Gizan pyramids, and I probably will interject some stuff because there were a yeah. few things that really, really stood out to me with that site. Um, before, or should I leave that for, let me see, hang on here. Um... Okay, I'll wait for that. Um, hey, sorry. By that? the way, this quarrying of rocks was done a lot. Maybe not a thousand miles, but yeah. like the rock from Easter Island is not natural to Easter Island. Yep. Yep. So it was quarried um, from elsewhere and brought over, well, and that's a very typical thing that they did. Baalbek. Uh, the site at Baalbek, they said that the the stones were quarried um, from Egypt. Um, so, well, they were either they were either compiled somewhere else, or they were brought from Egypt. Like, if you're going to say that humans made them, they, and they brought them from Egypt because it, that the rock that they use in Baalbek is not native to that area. So, if and they Baalbek brought is them, Lebanon, right? Yes, it's correct, correct. Balbek is, is Lebanon, Lebanon. So if they brought them from Egypt, I mean, it's, I think they said it was something like 200 miles and they would have had to carry them on a cart. Uh, that's insanity. Um, that's insanity. Like, I don't, I don't think that's. Hopefully, maybe they took a little bit of it across the Mediterranean Sea to make it a <laughs> little. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at my map over here. It's crazy. <laughs> How how buoyant how buoyant do you think wood is with a freaking thousand tons? Good God, of rock on um, it. Yeah, I, I don't or know. Even, even most, 100 most rock tons, goes like... right to the. Come on, haven't you thrown rocks into the pool and you all dive down to get them? They don't. Didn't float. you when you were a kid intentionally trying to find a piece of wood or a plastic bucket and put rocks in it and see how long it would hold? Not very right, long. right. Um, so. I there is something I want to mention about Baalbek, but I think I will wait to talk about uh, the Lewis holes that I, I talked about until we're talking about mm -hmm. why why this couldn't be made by anything other than non humans. So I'm going to move on from here, and we're just going to kind of start touching That's on these sites. That's where I was sites. going, Rick. I was talking non about angels. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Because well, let's, let's that, just go exactly there. Why are they where relevant? We're going. Right? Yeah. Because we just really don't believe the megaliths were made by humans, or at no. least not only by humans. So angelic technology, dude, angels have technology. Of they, course they, they do. They gave it to mankind. Um, of course they did. 
it both both the book of Genesis and Enoch talk about the technology that was given to men so that angels could wife the women. Yeah. Um, Enoch talks, and actually I think we've covered this in previous episodes, but mm -hmm. Enoch talks specifically about the exchange for wives, for human wives being the, the, um, uh, I guess catalyst being the catalyst for, for, um, watchers being able to, to, to give, or rather for humans being able to obtain, uh, watcher technology, angel, angelic technology. So um, that's not only in Enoch, it's it's more thorough in Enoch, but we have, right. I mean, there's biblical references to the same thing. The Bible talks about this was given, that was given. I'm not going to look it up right, right now. Right. You can go fact check. I, I have, want. right, absolutely. And uh, we have mentioned this in previous episodes. Correct. Cain, so Tubal Cain, right. Mm -hmm. So, so um, uh, not new news said, here. Yeah, right. Old news. Um, <clears throat> now, um, we will get further into this. I'm just going to touch on it real briefly. Uh, we obviously believe that uh, angelic technology was used here, right? But we also believe that um, <clears throat> that Nephilimic um, strength, if nothing else, brute force. But I, I think it was more than that. I think that they knew how to make these things. And if nothing else, their uh, their parents right, taught them how to make them. Uh, right. Obviously not the human ones. Um, so <laughs> yeah, no, uh, but <laughs> if she, if she survived the birth to begin right. with, correct, correct. Oh. Um, so the, I mean, I think that that explains a lot of it. And, and the reason I go back to this is because people are like, well, giants, okay. One talk about their stature, right? The sheer stature is insane, but have you ever, and we've talked about this before. So if you don't know this, let me give a super quick kind of intro to explain it real quick. But demons are the spirits of disembodied giants that's what they are so dead giants correct they are dead giant spirits that's what they are so they're, they they yep. are disembodied nephilim is what demons are really um which is why demons seek bodies we've talked about this at length as well um but the reason that i'm mentioning it is because have you if you've ever seen a person that's actually possessed i don't know if you ever have before but there is some <laughs> insane strength that you've just seen it in the movies. I'm sure you've yeah, watched yeah. them. If nothing else, and there there are legit accounts of that. And I mean, I've yep. I've witnessed stuff like like just inexplicable strength, just inexplicable. Um, of course, they come shrieking and flying out as soon as you mention Jesus. But nonetheless, uh, they do have much human strength, right? And if you can imagine that a disembodied spirit occupying a body it doesn't even belong in can supply mm. that kind of strength. You can only begin to exponentially imagine how powerful these crazy creatures were. I mean, they were just right. massive as one, and then two, just unbelievably strong, unbelievably strong. Now, there's exaggerations in some of the books of Enoch about how big they were, but sometimes you really wonder. You're like, well, I mean, did you see the wall in, in China? I mean, I'll, I'll have to pull up an image of it a little bit later. It's literally a mountain face carved at a 90 degree angle. Like, it's crazy. Like, who does right. that? Well, who even and has the you capability? Know what? The Book of Enoch isn't the only one that gives the dimensions of the the Nephilimic giants. Correct. Um, I mean, shoot. The, There's tons of apocryphal how, stuff that, you know, how lends... Given yeah, in in Roman and Greek uh, myths, the typhus or ty typhoon, whatever his name is. I think it's typhus. Um, I think you're right. Chronos. Chronos. Um, oh, yeah. He would know that name from uh, comic books. I know it from. Oh, God of War, right? This is a very <laughs> typical one nowadays. But Chronos, actually, I was reading the other day, was... Um, in I can't remember if it was Sumerian or um, who that he was he was depicted as Yahweh and as the treacherous one and the light yeah, bearer. I, I mean they're all the I same. I think repeated that is stuff. in Sumerian text. Well, because yeah. um, I don't know about Yahweh. I think he may may uh, they may call him El in in the Sumerian sure. lore. Sure, sure, but sure. But still, there's there's like King Og and he's huge. Um, yeah. Apparently, his Bed oh yeah yeah that's was on right. display for quite some time may even still be on display in like I, iraq 
Yeah. And it's, um, and I that's, think is and you're even talking post diluvian. Um, so mm. that's, like, oh, yeah. Like recent. I mean, that's a I, whole thing. It's, it's in itself. Almost that we'll modern, modern history. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's documentation. So it's, you know, it's, it's uh, written history. There is Native Americans have their lore. The women, yeah. uh, the, the babies were so big that it would kill the, the women. I mean, um, and who is that? That's I'm about to chief, pull it up. Chief Joseph uh, has Joseph. really, really interesting stories um, from different Native American tribes, I'm about to pull um, up First here. Nations people, and what they they believe. And going back to the snake, the serpent mound that Rick was talking about earlier. Oh, we chief did that Joseph in our Riverwind. Dragon. That's his I name. Will. He's such a cool guy. Yeah, he really is cool. Um, listening to him speak is is just a pleasure to me. Shell but... and I should mention that we have like a soft spot for Native Americans in our hearts uh, for lots of reasons, but they're just they're just a they're just cool. I mean, it's just cool. Yeah. Like they had so much so much contact with the land and and <sighs> everything God made. Like it's it's kind of you know to a point it's it's a little um, <clears throat> enviable. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Even Can you imagine? I, I don't mean enviable as in I didn't. I want to take it away from him as in I wish I could have done it too. Kind of. Idea. Right. Yeah. I wish we appreciated the land and nature that way today. Yep. Um. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's true. We both do. We both enjoy. Um. The pre-colonial American history, I guess that might be, you know, the politically correct way to say it. I love <laughs> ancient American history, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's super cool. It's always been really a, a, a thing for me. But then again, you know what? I mean, I was cutting my reading teeth on Louis L'Amour when I was like 12 or 13. <laughs> Anybody who knows Louis L'Amour will be like, that that chick right there, she mm -hmm. read Louis L'Amour. All of his stuff was not cowboy westerns, guys. <laughs> he had some really great historical fiction. <laughs> That's um, cool. A fun book about the Anasazis that some someday maybe we will get into mm. the Anasazis and mm. and their very interesting disappearance. Mm. Um, and their very anyway. interesting oh, um, uh, homes. That, that they had and why they were the way they were really, really some interesting mm -hmm. a, as somebody who was a young adult and a teenager in Arizona, Arizona's history. Oh, sure. sure. Really sparked my imagination. <clears throat> That's but, very cool. Okay. So the, the deep secret in the room, we're going to make tinfoil hats. We'll do it soon, guys. <laughs> Um, um, so that's so, the difference so, between a, a megalith and, and, other big structures is Correct. that human um, didn't and make these things completely. Uh, that's essentially why they're relevant. Um, that that's why it's important to to recognize that they're relevant, um, and that they they frankly, I mean, this is right along the same line. These couldn't have been made by men, um, and we're about to give you guys some solid examples why. Um, and actually, that's exactly where I'm going to pick up here on um, on that topic. <clears throat> Um, so at Baalbek, this is just a kind of a quick aside that I wanted to include because it is super fascinating and quite frankly, mind blowing. Um, so there, um, oh, whoops, I'm in the wrong book. Uh, I'm going to keep talking though. So there is a, uh, a phenomenon in construction, especially like gigantic construction, like the Romans used and everything the Greeks used for their large pillars and all that. Uh, that, um, uh, here we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. Um, that, that is used to hoist these giant pillars or these giant, um, blocks, right. To, to get them in place. And they are called Lewis holes. <laughs> now a Lewis hole is, is a fascinating little thing. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull up an image real quick while we're doing this, but basically what a Lewis hole is, is a, a perforation um, that is made in a, uh, here we go. This is good right here. That's made in a rock or a block of some sort. This is an excellent example right here is made in a block and is for the purpose of hoisting that block high up in the air or stacking things one on top of the other. Um, 
is fitted with a little piece. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one right here. There we go. <clears throat> is fitted with a little piece right here in the middle. So this is this is the actual little, um, I guess we'll call it the hook. These two things are fitted. These two little pieces of metal are, are fitted onto this hook here. They are, they are pushed down or hammered in to the block itself. And then this middle piece comes in and is hammered on top of that so that they can, it pushes the, the, the pieces of the block towards itself. And then obviously you can pick it up, right? You can hoist it um, because it's insane to try and lift it with your hands. And you use a chain or whatever you need to, to pull it up, okay? Pulling and all that good stuff. So that's typical modern use for, for a Lewis hole. Well, the issue here is that some of the stones that were used and were in place in Baalbek don't have these. And the interesting thing is that littered in that area, there are, <clears throat> there are other stones that were used by the Romans that are pillars that do have them. So clearly there was different technology that was being used and occupied at this point, right? So I found that absolutely fascinating. I mean, right, how during in, the and time when it was called Heliopolis, right? Correct, correct. That's that's well, I mean, that's that's when we started to see those kind of um, more modern uh, uh, construction, or sorry, um, uh, yeah, I guess construction methods. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Um, but but what's fascinating about it to me is that the particular structure that they're talking about that was done this way at uh, Baalbek is the sa a similar structure to what's at Stonehenge. You've got two pieces and then an another piece and the over dolmen it. across it. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, the sheer, the sheer force just to get them in that, that place. And there's no holes. There's no, I mean, they're, I mean, if you see the blocks, they're, they're like one right on top of the other. That's so typical with megalithic, megalithic structures that they fit perfectly together. And it's, it's just crazy. Hey, Rick, um, I sent a, oops, I didn't send here. Now I sent, I sent a <laughs> um, link in our chat of a just saw here, Balbeck. really crazy picture of oh, that's Balbeck. cool. It's beautiful. Here, let's take a look at it. This, you guys can at least see the site, what it looks like. And, and uh, take into account, obviously, right? Because um, it's ruins. So this is this is all sorts of like it's I'm trying to see if we can find some megalithic pieces here. Um, like all of this looks like more modern stuff and like kind of somewhere like in these Probably areas over here. More of the Romanesque. Yep. 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 And, and it's interesting. I wish we could see a good one here because they're, you'll literally see the blocks are like six, seven times the size of these kind of blocks right here. It's just here. It's look just at this one. Unbelievable how big they are here. I'm about to pull it up right now. Let's see if we can find it. Bum, 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 burr, burr, burr. So there's a second one, Rick, that I sent underneath that. Yeah. It's I'm trying got to pull those it up right huge now. Huge columns with a huge. There you go. Um, I swear that's called a dolmen on the top, and and I will right verify that that is yeah. So the, so the these even show top. Even these bad boys are are like more modern history. Like even these are are Roman uh, or Greek in nature. Um, yeah, the stuff in in the book is like is still bigger than this stuff. It's just unfathomable how big this stuff is. It's crazy. Um, and this in itself is a, it's an unbelievable feat. Holy crap. Look at that. It's massive. Right. I mean, it's, and huge. that's man-made. Like, it looks like it's, that looks like what? Three, four stories high. Good night. Probably more than that. Look, I mean, look at this back here. If these yeah. are, I mean, that's gotta be what, like, and that's, still that's stands. probably that's a fairly recent photo. Yeah. 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 Um, so it, it just, it, it's kind of hard to, like, I would really recommend you guys go just take a look at these things online because it, yeah, it's just amazing. mind boggling. It really is mind boggling. Um, uh, so that having, having said that about Baalbek, I do also want to turn to the wonderful pyramids of Giza, which is great um, because I wanted to interject something about oh, go for it both of these places and that is we see the the romans built upon what was at Baalbek before 
when they took it over and called it Heliopolis. Um, and in the pyramids in Giza, same thing has happened. We've always attributed, or for a, a few millennia anyhow, we attributed the the pyramids in Giza to um, Pharaoh this or Pharaoh that. Mm -hmm. But now they mm -hmm. are calling these structures, they're classified now as pre-dynastic. And they are saying that the Pharaoh's came upon them they did not build mm -hmm. them they came upon them already yep. there and yep. right. tried to repurpose them yep and so um our history the narrative is very different from what the truth must be because this wasn't the, the pharaohs didn't build this with a million jewish slaves and um <laughs> again what sand ramps and pulleys um they i was can thinking do about this the other day some... like like yeah. what about what about the fact that okay so what if they're predated say that they were using pulley systems like the metals that they had available to them at those times wouldn't withstand the weight even the metals like right you know even I mean, our metals today they have had they have <laughs> had people go into giza try to recreate yep um making a pyramid and they caused so much destruction and it was such a failure that they kicked them out they kicked them out and this was recent what in the 1980s i think it uh, was uh yeah somewhere around there um actually that's that's a good that's a good little jumping in <laughs> point right there so we can't do this like we can't move yeah. the pregnant woman nope. a thousand miles right um <laughs> we we can't make a simple pyramid out of building out of the stones the way they did it not yeah. to mention everything inside of of the pyramids which rick will get into um mm -hmm. yeah sure we can make pyramid like structures you've got the Certainly. luxor in in um uh vegas you've got that really cool i swear it's a bass pro uh shop in louisville kentucky <laughs> what we were going we i don't on our um honeymoon i drove with danny on um one of his cross-country um trips and i got to see these things and i swear oh there's, i I'll see, have I see. to look and see it's a, I, it's, see I swear saying. it's in louisville but so That's yeah funny. it's a pyramid shape but it is not a pyramid, a pyramid like the pyramids in giza good night or anywhere else in the world for that matter right or any, um, yeah any of the real pyramids ziggurats so included it, jumping right onto that um i'm going to give you guys just a tiny bit of context uh about the great pyramid and I, I i watched this on a really great podcast which i will provide the name for uh, i don't have it on hand right now but it, it the guy that was being interviewed was greg Braden. And he's, he's just a brilliant guy, really cool mm -hmm. guy, actually. Um, I really enjoyed listening to him. Just a wealth of knowledge in general. Just really cool guy to listen to. Um, but he was talking about how that the, the Great Pyramid, which is the one I'm actually going to talk to you guys about a little bit here, um, is not the one that you see in all the photos. It's actually missing the capstone. It's missing the top part. Um, it's over 400 feet tall. And it's comprised of huge limestone blocks, which are... 20 ton blocks uh each one is 20 20 tons let that sink in for a second 20 tons that is good night what is that uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 tons 20 times 400 I'm to do four, math in my head real quick 400 thousand i think that is four, yeah yeah 40 000, 40 000, 40 000, 40 000 pound blocks a piece i mean each one is forty thousand freaking pounds um now, there is stuff that can lift that, sure, um, but not any technology we knew that anybody had back then. Um, right. I mean, you might be able to, get, with 100 slaves, <laughs> get one on top of the other, and then they'll all die, and then you have to use another 100. Right. So um, just saying, if that, if that technology were so readily available, they'd, they'd probably be able to do it with a lot more ease, you know, at, at the time that, that the, uh, the typical standard model indicates, right? Um, 
so what Shell was talking about was actually what uh, Greg said that he was privy to was that they were trying to recreate a, a pyramid in, in, at this size, right, at this scale um, with the same kind of materials and everything. And he said that in particular, which I thought this was really fascinating, they had to commission Caterpillar to make a specially designed um, instrument or, or a mechanical uh, lifting device. I can't think of the word right now crane uh <laughs> to or i don't know what it was i don't know if it was a crane or something else right it might have been something different to be able to to try and help build this thing i'm assuming it was a crane well after six months they were kicked out the government was like stop you're destroying everything like just quit it it's stupid um so they gave up they couldn't recreate it they just couldn't do it and this was 80s 90s i think this is early 90s or late 80s um some really fascinating things about this uh this pyramid this great pyramid i want to show you guys a cool picture i thought this was super fascinating now this is a an approximate recreation of course but um nonetheless i think you guys will find it very fascinating so this is what we see now when we go to to this pyramid that was not how it was supposed to look all of this is stripped off like all of it's right, gone this all is how of the cladding to look. right mm -hmm. now here's the crazy part this right here this white part is also limestone just like this so how is that possible apparently they polished the crap out of this limestone just with what believe yeah exactly with what that's exactly right um and it looks like marble and so you know it probably gleamed amazingly in the sun and the reason that they know that this that this is not how it was supposed to look that it was supposed to look like this this, this uh this white covering with this golden capstone top was because at the bottom here of the one they have now, there's still a little bit left over, but like, that's all that is. They've, they've used it for like mosques and other purposes there just for practicality's sake. Um, so what I thought was interesting was this is, so this is the original outside. This is the inside, right? But then there are internal chambers and mm. these chambers are just crazy. So the, the traditional model says that um, that these were for dynastic kings and queens where they would be buried and, and all that good stuff. Well, just a, just a little bit of information about these stones in these rooms, okay? So the blocks that they use to make these internal rooms are 70-ton blocks. Right. That's one. So that, that's like 140,000 pounds per block. Yep. That's one, okay? Now, two... Um, these blocks that they're comprised of on top of that are flat within a thousandth of an inch a thousandth of an inch that's insanely precise i mean just and and the crazy thing is that these stones are so precise that there's no need for they're mortar airtight. yeah yep. no they're they're in their airtight it's crazy they didn't have any reason to do anything else i mean that's that's kind of unbelievable. You would you would die of you would suffocate of <laughs> of lack of air. You would suffocate so tight, <laughs> um, which is pro possibly why they believe that this was for you know the the uh, dynastic kings. Well, I mean that's that was the theory originally. Or the bulls. Um, correct. Um, now another reason that that these this kind of thing is relevant is that these pyramids are similar to other pyramids or are almost identical to other pyramids in other countries all around the world. Um, and there's tons of other stuff we could get into. We could get into ley lines. We could get into um, precision um, calculations. And I'll just give you guys some kind of quick overview about this. So these pyramids that are found in other parts of the world, like, like the Mayans and the Aztec and the so on and so forth. I think in China, there's also pyramids. Um, right these all share commonalities which are understanding of math <laughs> of the circumference of the earth the, the diameter of the earth earth's relationship to the moon the relationship to the planet's magnetic field like all these things are relevant and play into how they created these things right. so that is an added level as christians instantaneously you go like of course semi-angelic beings working in coordination with angelic beings and then getting humans right. on board to to cooperate as well of course you're going to reach this kind of stuff of course you're going to have knowledge of this stuff if it's widespread right. and god said disperse 
you know, of course they were going to do that. Like it's not a, you know, it's it's not a a, a surprise by any stretch well, of the imagination. No, because you have to realize too, these were the beings that sang together <laughs> when God created all. Gave were joyous when man was created. It, it it's they they got to witness creation. Yep. Our creation, Crazy. they were mm-hmm. already created. That's why Tim Alberino likes to call them the our older brothers. The um, angelic race, right? The elder yep. race. That's what he calls them. The elder race. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, is this a show. time that I can jump in? There's other things that are in com that that are um common to these vastly different places that um, archaeologists, historians have no explanation for. Um, (laughs) According to the narrative, modern historical belief, um, the Egyptians never had contact with uh, the Mayans or the Aztecs. Mesoamericans, right. they didn't have contact with, um, oh man, let's see who, uh, maybe Sumeria and Gobekli Tepe. So we've got I ba- basically modern day Iraq, modern day Turkey. However, it's highly unlikely, uh, according to the narrative, that they ever had anything to do with New Zealanders. Or Central Americans. Yet, we have the weirdest things in in the relief carvings. We we have this this cosmic purse. It's a a handbag, man handbag. Um, I think it's got. It's the man bag. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. Give me just a second. Dude, I swear they're wearing. Watching. Yeah, I I was gonna tease and say something about a cosmic sundial, but dude. <laughs> well, I Hold mean, on, let me look at my sundial here. <laughs> here you go. It's loading here. Let's see if we can get a little closer. So this is Assyrian. Oh, the Nimrud one. Yup. Oops, it's a little close. Sorry. Dude, Sorry, the Birdman. <laughs> the the Birdman is looks like he's throw, <laughs> throwing a football. It's probably a loaf of bread, <laughs> but it kind of resembles a, yeah, a small yeah. Nerf football to me. Piece he's of wearing a watch, <laughs> and he is holding a handbag. Um, I think if you scroll up on the same page, Rick, I think there's a couple more. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's one right there. It's just kind of the intro one. Is that showing up yet, or is it just going slow? Yeah, no, it's there. I And I can't see where this one is. Um, There's another one down here. Let me see. And I'm not, not seeing Darth the Vader. caption. There's one down later that is Incan or Olmec. Here's the uh, uh, that, that is Tepe. Gobekli. Yeah. Okay. And so it's at the top oh, that go. the handbags are. They're not being held. There you go. Tell me this isn't the weirdest looking thing. Doesn't that look like the dude is in a spacesuit? Yeah. I am not an ancient alien theorist. I'm truly not. But it that does look like that. It's so weird. I don't have an explanation yeah. for this. But dude Still has a handbag. I don't see a watch on him. Um, this no. handbag thing, it is so weird. And yeah. it's one of those common things. Another thing they do is the relief. They, um, oh, I wish I knew what this was called. Um, they are not chiseling it was listed there. into the rock. They're doing it. It, instead of the design being in the rock, 
it's they chiseled out all of everything so that it's outside of the rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm sure there's a really great name for it, guys. Art's not my thing, and I don't know what it is. Sorry, I should anybody know. wants to share it. I studied um, the making of rubber stamps in China, so I, or sorry, mm. uh, stone stamps in China, so I should know that. Um, I can't remember the name of it though. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's that's what it would be though. That effect, right? Yep, yep. And actually, when we took that class, just a random side note. Our teacher actually asked, do you do you want to leave an imprint or an outprint kind of idea? And I was like, oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about it, you know? Yeah, so. That's crazy. Cool stuff. Yeah, it, it is, is crazy. It's real interesting. Um, that's, that's what you wanted to touch on, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let, me, let me just double check here. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Um, I do want to touch on Antarctica real quick. Oh, and then yes. I think we can move on to our final point. And I have a few things that mm -hmm. I want to touch on going back to the, uh, the pyramid, which are super useful. Well, the Sphinx in particular. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> so Antarctica is a crazy, crazy topic. Um, it is to me personally, I think it is one of the most fascinating topics ever. Uh, it's just, Absolutely inhospitable. Um, I watched a video recently with a guy, it's kind of a side note, but um, just talking about the inhospitality of it. He he says that you can't sweat in Antarctica because your own sweat will turn to freeze and kill you. Oh, um, it is just an inhospitable place, just crazy. Well, there is, um, I won't get too deep into the waters because you guys can go research this for yourself, but apparently science has discovered that um, in theory, right? I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell anyone. I know this, this is what I believe this is what I endorse. This is just a scientific kind of accepted reality of what happens cyclically on the earth that every 5,000 years or so, I'm uh, sorry, every thousand some odd years um, there's like a changing on the earth and then there's another five that within that there's like a set of 5,000 years where things changes. And within that subset, there's a 26,000 year cycle. Um, I won't get into the water or bore you to death, but there's a 26,000 cycle. So according to that cycle, we are on a warming period right now. And um, Greg uh, Braden on that same podcast was the one that explained this and I, I was just listening to it, but apparently, independently of whether humans did or did not do anything, whether we would have done something or not, we would still be on a warming cycle. So the fact that if we've added anything to it is kind of negligible. Um, it, it probably has been a little bit added to, but I, I don't think it's probably that much of a problem because we're on a warming cycle anyway, climatic, climactically on a um, astronomical geological timescale. Um, so, I bring that up to say that because we're on this warming period, there is a two mile sheet of ice in Antarctica thick, right? And as we've begun to enter into this warming age, that ice sheet has begun to melt. Mm -hmm. And as it has melted, <laughs> it has begun to reveal all sorts of crazy stuff in the landscape that we were not expecting. Now, um, there is one with a set of just, it looks like kind of like, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, you can clearly see it sticking up out of the ground because wind has blown over it. And it kind of looks like, a almost like a meteorite when it's entering into the atmosphere, you can see a little tail behind it because the wind is pushing against it. And there's several of these, like all in a line. I don't know how big to say that they are, but they're probably, I mean, massive structures because they're taken from satellite and they're visible from satellite. Um, but what I particularly want to get into is an apparent pyramid that was discovered in the Antarctic. Um, I don't remember the name for this, uh, particular, um, uh, pyramid, but I do want to show it to you guys. Um, let's see. And you're going to love the title and the heading here in a second. And it's going to be like, well, Ricky, aren't you looking at the title? And then <laughs> I will explain exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, cool. You can see that, yeah? Is that yes. visible? Cool, yes. cool, cool. Okay, so that's about in this area here, right? But this is what this, this thing looks like. Well, 
<clears throat> Shell and I are coming back to this. Why is this relevant? Okay. It doesn't really look like <laughs> at first when I saw it, I was like, it doesn't really look like anything, but then <laughs> it does look like something because we already discussed this in, in natural formation. We don't see 90 degree angles. It just doesn't happen. That's not a thing that happens in nature. 90 degree angles are not normal. They're not, um, they're not a, a process that God necessarily intended. They, they, what I'm saying is that nature was acted upon for, su for such a thing like this to exist. Mm -hmm. So, um, because those are unnatural and it's very interesting that I, I started looking for this. I tried to started find, trying to find everything that I could about it because it's super fascinating to me. Um, because it just, I mean, there's not very many places left on the earth to discover one is the bottom of the ocean and the other is Antarctica, right? I mean, that's really kind of it. Um, and so, um, there's some other caves and stuff, but you know, granted that's kind of, it's still kind of small, um, what we have left to explore. So Greg goes on to explain that in 2016, 2017, this image, um, or, or what we're looking at here, just in general, this, uh, this pyramid was still visible from, uh, Google earth. And I was like, oh, that's very cool. And he says, but after about 2017, they pixelated all the images and you could no longer see them anymore so um what did i find uh, but i did confirm his reality and i'll show you why give me a second here this guy will pop up real quick maybe maybe not um essentially here it is yeah okay let's share this tab instead so they come back saying new pyramid in, in antarctica not quite say geologists and, and I thought instantly, I was like, ah, these bunch of morons. I don't want to read this article. Like, I want to be, I want to put on the tinfoil hat. No, no, no. I just, it, it was like, <laughs> I, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm not trying to disprove anything. I just kind of want some information about it. Well, I did get some, and I thought it was very interesting. If you notice right here, when was this published? November 29th, 2016, 4, 21 p.m. I was like, Wow. That's interesting because when you go over here on Google Earth and you try to look at this bad boy, there's nothing but white. I don't think you guys can see it, but um, <laughs> there's there's nothing but white here. Check this out. This is that area right there. And there's nothing to be seen. It's just it's just there. And so looking at it, I was like, well, that that's kind of a disappointment because I went looking for this thing. And I was like, that's such a disappointment. Until I realized that, no, it's it's not a disappointment. <laughs> it was intentional. Like, whatever is there. You have to hide something. Intentionally covered up. Now, there's tons of other yeah. stuff I would love to talk to you guys about, about Antarctica. And Shelly and I probably will do that in the future. Um, so you Yeah, might the whole check Colonel the Beard story was really, really interesting. Fascinating. Man, Fascinating. one of the coolest stories I have ever heard. Um that is uh, going to be something that we probably do behind the paywall coming up in the next month or so, um, next few weeks, because it, it's just too fascinating Super to kind of like pass over. We might yeah. give you guys a little snippet online, and then if you guys want, you can you know hop on and, and take a take a listen to it. Um, so anyway, I, I'm not going to go too much more into that, but that's really all I wanted to touch on with Antarctica. Um, so was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we move on to this last subject here? Um, I don't think so. Okay. You know what? However, we one of the coolest megalithic structures um, that I've been fascinated with since I was a child um, is Petra. And I did not even think for us to really look into Petra, which is in mm. Israel. It's amazing. Like the doorway. Hmm. giants could walk through they're like 15 oh, wow. foot high doors they're it, it, it petra is crazy it's beautiful and hmm. um i don't know i guess that's maybe something we'll we'll have to do later um <laughs> the megaliths they're everywhere and why they would really you are. need a 15 foot door i mean yeah Yep. Yep. Really? You just, you wouldn't. 
It's crazy. Man. Man. It's crazy. Oh, the crazy things we crap. don't know. There's there's so much we don't know. Um, you could fill an infinite amount of books with stuff we don't know. Um, right. Like for real, real, yo. So uh, this is actually kind of cool. Hopping onto this last one. Oh, did you want to look at Petra or anything? Or you just wanted to mention it? No, no, no. We'll just, we'll, we'll leave that for another day. We'll get back to it. We'll get back we to it. We will. Like I said, this is a mega subject and there's so, is. so much. It's like almost megalithic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I wanted to bring up this last kind of point to you guys. There's tons of stuff that I'm not even going to get through all my notes, but we're just going to kind of end on this, this note here. Yeah. Um, there's too much for this. Yeah, there really is. Okay, so bah, 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 bah. so the Sphinx. Why do I want to mention the Sphinx? Well, there's something very fascinating that happens around the Sphinx that that Greg mentions. Greg mentions that Robert Shock mentions, and coincidentally, um, I went looking for this information, and I actually came across. I didn't realize that what I pulled up was Robert Shock's page. I didn't even know it. Oh, that's I was funny. I was just looking at. I was like. It says Robert. Oh my gosh, it is Robert Shock. Holy cow. So uh, Robert Shock is apparently very well known um, uh, amongst Egyptologists. Uh, and um, he, I, I don't know much about it because I, you know, I'm not super informed on it, but um, I'm learning just like you guys. So apparently Robert Shock says that uh, there are, here, let me just pull it up so you guys can take a peek at it. Mr. Sphinx. Mr. Uh, the Sphinx could have not been created by the Egyptians. They also came upon it. And the reason we know this is because of the striations um, along the Sphinx's bootay. Um, well, this is what I thought you were going to talk about. Cool yeah. Beans. It's super, super relevant. This video um, is really great. The the one that Ricky keeps referencing with it's so Greg good. Braden. It's a really, really good video. I'm, I'm definitely going to put it in, in, the, find in, it in the reference for you guys because uh, nice. it's, it's super useful. Um, so these striations here are very fascinating because for the longest time, uh, the in fact, actually, this is a great one right here. Let's look at this bad boy. Um <laughs> Scientists were saying that uh, the striations were wind erosion, but wind erosion looks like this and rain erosion looks like this. What do you think that looks like? What does this look like to you? This <laughs> is wind. This is clearly not wind erosion. This is clearly Water. rain erosion. Yeah. Um, and not just rain. Sorry, that's not the right word. Fluvial. Fluvial, Fluvial refers to diluvian Type moving water flooding you, you've seen yep. a a flu right and the flu of water yeah goes yep. yep and and why is this relevant well check this out i'll show you guys this is a really good one um that this is robert uh shock oh, the, the one i was talking about check this out this is this is really cool now this is pro obviously this is a uh, um an animator's you know understanding of how this works but but clearly, this explains way better than than what uh, what scientists have believed, geologists have believed for the longest time, and and sorry, historians. Now, why is this relevant? Because geologists actually are okay with this. Like that's not a problem for them. It's historians that have a problem with this, which is very very fascinating. Um, it's very fascinating because it doesn't fit their narrative. Now, as Christians, right. a flood is like obviously that happened like, there's no problem with us and right especially if they're megalithic the sixth chapter yo <laughs> and we'll tell you guys a little bit right we'll tell you guys a little bit later on the next episode we're going to get into why this is relevant and why we believe that megalithic structures well we kind of already touched on it um are, are pre-diluvian well they're pre-diluvian because the nephilim that existed at that time and the crossbreeding that, that existed between the angelic race and the human race uh, was such that it gave rise to this kind of happening that it was even possible to from the get go, right? So that is why we I wanted to stress this last little part. Like, how is this possible? Well, it's possible because it survived the flood. And how did it survive the flood? I mean, Shelly, you were just talking about one right at the beginning of the program. That's like, uh, what is it? That that's like five the, five millennia old. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Um, what is the name of that one? Come on, where'd my Ireland dude go? Uh, 
Newgrange in Ireland. Newgrange. Okay, let's see if we can find a quick pic of it before we close out. Um, Still waterproof. I'm, I'm proud of us. We're we're doing really good, dude. For this complex of a, a freaking right subject, it's it's astonishing. We have heard you. Wow. We have heard you all, and we are trying to talk <laughs> less. Um, it's a, man. They it's a mound now. Is that yes, it? That's it. Okay. Okay. That's crazy big. If if wow. you can see some of the holy um, crap. All right, let's get a look at it. I think that one shows the entrance. Solstice oh, magic. It's, it's, these things are really cool. Um, they show some of the stones, too, in the lower left-hand corner, Rick. Oh, yeah, I see them. Um, that entrance stone, it's really, really pretty. And it's huge. Mm. Again, look how big it is. So the bottom stones, as you go up, and there's there's another photo um, going into the entrance, and it's really cool to look at because you can see that the stones inside it's it's not an earth mound like it looks like it's stone, and then there's earth on top of it, but you can see like how big the the bottom layer of stones are. Um, where is copy image link here? What a bizarre. Wow. But these are like small stones. How weird. Some of them are. Um, where is this a paste? weird Why thing? Why can't I paste this right here? Right, this see. is the one that the capstone is 19 feet off the ground. Still waterproof after five millennia. Holy crap. That is crazy. And those oh, those capstone. stones, uh huh. The, These guys, the right? capstone is huge. It it's what is the top, the the roof, basically the right. roof stone. Um, wow! But you see the the bottom stones. You see how huge yeah. those are. Those are the yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. are multiple tons. Um, the ones above them, yeah, you understand people putting those there. Um. And Jeez. and honestly, this one I think was probably something man made, but it's still, mm -hmm. I mean, but, not that oh, not that man can't well, do but, great things. But the, but the capstone. Oh yeah, no, I don't have an answer for the no. That's uh, crazy. It, it, how how much did I say it weighs? Two hundred. It says. I swear to you, I double checked because this sounds like so much. 200,000 tons and I don't know if they they got that number wrong um you know what let me look that is 400 million pounds I mean that's like that's half a billion pounds I can't even I can't even begin to fathom something that large. Like what the heck? I Me mean, neither. Um Wow. That's that's crazy. I mean that's like that that's seriously like astronomically heavy. I I can't even and think of things. It seems like, like I at don't that. I don't know that I can I, I don't feel comfortable with that number. <laughs> um two hundred thousand tons. I told it's actually you. more shell it's more because those are tons in in like oh, kilos. Oh uh, yeah, then it's almost double that. Okay, let's see. Hold on. I don't think it's quite that much, but it's a lot. Uh two tons. And I don't think that uh, I don't <laughs> know <laughs> that I think that's a rock then. The earth on top of it I could understand being it's, that. It's it's 440 million pounds. It's 440 million pounds. That capstone is 440 million pounds. Here, I'm going to I'm going to put it just put it up there real quick just one more time cuz it's just I mean, I just I don't even know what to say. Like right? that's just that's just I mean, freaking crazy. I, it's like I can't believe that. How it's so so much. Yeah, that's that's it's um um it covers okay. an acre oh, that's of cool. land. This is cool. Oh wow, yeah, that may, I mean that makes sense. Here we go. 
This is a cool one right here. This is a cool shot. There's a roof uh, box opening above the tomb's entrance, and at dawn, sunbeam strikes through it. Right. It it works in 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 tandem with uh, the solstice, which is even crazier. <sighs> Jeez, man. There's no doubt in my mind that that the satanic forces, and by satanic, <laughs> I mean the opposer. They really, really wanted this this earth for themselves. They were really, they were truly envious. I think of they humans. made some really cool stuff that they wanted to enjoy for themselves. Of course, yeah, of course, I agree. And, and and humans enjoyed it along with for a while. You know, right? In so far as they can in a sinful world. Wow, that's just freaking crazy, dude. All right, well. <laughs> guys i hope you have enjoyed this ride with us it was a fun one man I told you man we're taking you all over the world tonight it's crazy 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 um i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh this episode of megaliths the tower of babel and dragon ball z um next time we will talk about the Tower of Babel. That's right. The Tower of Babel. And it's not in this episode because in our estimation, it does not count as a megalith. And it's we will mini tell lift. you why. It is a mini <laughs> lift. A medium lift. Bummer. It does um, not get to, to fall under the Aegeus of the Golden Age structures. Mm-hmm. 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 Zeptepi. Zeptepi no more. Zeptepi <laughs> is what the uh the Egyptians called the first time they were referring to the golden age, which we will be talking about in the next episode. Um, so we hope you guys will tune in. Um, and we didn't even do any scripture for this. No. No, I, I am gonna finish with the ironic blessing, but there was really Absolutely there was really not any need. I because we're just laying a foundation. You know, right, we're and the it's here. it's much more historical and archaeological. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, if you need uh, scripture tie-in, again, it would have been Ezekiel and Isaiah um, at the the fall of the angelic older race. Yeah, and and frankly, part you can of them, check. Sorry, you can check. Um, back to to genesis 6 to give you some point of reference for all this stuff uh especially the first the beginning of those chapters um you can look at um uh the book of enoch i would really really highly recommend i'll, I'll put the the book of enoch that that tim specifically recommended because it's it's the most reliable it's the one that uh jude and the jesus first, both quote the from. first book right yep, right yep. first book um, of enoch so you guys kind of have a, a point of reference for it but Really, I mean, clearly this stuff happened, man. Like, there's no de denying it. We live in a in a very fallen world, fallen from the get go, almost for us. Um, we weren't fallen, but you know, there was plenty of beings that were before we were here. So, well, um, I would say we were fallen. Praise God, we are redeemed. Oh, certainly, certainly, we're still in a <laughs> fallen state, but um, we are at least at least now we're a poor image of what is to come. Uh, some. Mm. Some are still not poor images even. They're, they're not even light bearers in the least of, of the word of God. So, man, good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Let's close this bad boy out. <laughs> this is a heavy subject. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Talking about the megaliths. All right. Um, <laughs> Those big old <laughs> heavy stones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. I just want to remind you, if you're not part of our Patreon community, please hit us up. It's only five bucks a month, and we're trying to put tons of stuff behind the paywall. It's super interesting, super fascinating. If you like listening to us, you like listening to us four dragons talk over and over and over, we're happy to to uh, to oblige you guys. So Absolutely. we love you guys. That's, that's the Hello. end of it. Shalom and Maranatha. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching this episode of The Christian Theological Dark Web. For questions or comments, please email us at 
the Christian Theological Dark Web at gmail.com. If you'd like to support us, please look for the Patreon link in the description. This has been another production of CTDW Studios. Thank you, and God bless.